a lot is for you, a Buddha to be. Welcome to a Buddhism Dharma talk. Uh, bear with me, and I hope you enjoy. I'm going to uh, do my best to read mindfully and out loud what I have studied. When our enthusiasm for the Dharma is guided by love, compassion, joy, and equanimity, we honor the Buddha's central mission of peace. MN 22. Wrongly grasping the Dharma is compared to catching a poisonous snake by its tail. A snake will bite and cause death or sickness if held incorrectly. But if the snake is caught correctly, the venom can be extracted from medicine and the snake released without harm. Grasping the meaning and don't cling. Healthy mind, healthy body. SN 413 recounts the story of the Buddha experiencing severe pain due to his foot having been cut by a stone splinter. Nevertheless, he was not distressed, and when prodded by Mara, he responded, I lie down full of compassion for all beings. This is the compassion generated when doing the, doing the taking and giving meditation taught in the Sanskrit tradition, where a practitioner imagines taking the suffering of others upon himself and giving others his own happiness. An amazing thought and cultivation, springing into good deeds, energy, and much more. Another story of the Buddha walked across thorns happily, disconnected mind from body, for the good of another. Serenity, samatha, and insight, vipassana, are a great combo. Find balance, know and understand through reasoning and experience. Confirming for ourself, the Samadharaja Sutra says, Buddhas do not, uh, do not was away negativities with water, clear away beings, dukkha with their hands, or transform, transfer their own knowledge to another. They liberate by teaching the truth of reality. Then there's the four immeasurables. Learn to maintain them. Love, compassion, joy, and equanimity. Now the five faults and the eight antidotes. Laziness, kosaja, and the antidote is mental piloncy through faith, aspiration. Chanada, next is effort. Forgetting the instruction or the meditation object, mindfulness. Three is excitement, laxity, same as the introspective awareness, stability, and clarity. Five is over application, the antidote is equanimity. Four, non application, is to apply the appropriate antidote to whichever fault has arisen and exert effort to eliminate it. Today's quotes one, Change is never painful, only resistance to change is painful. Two, you will not be punished for your anger, you will be punished by your anger. Three, everything that has a beginning has an end. Make peace with that and all will be well. Death is only certain, or should I say transformation is certain, like a cloud, rain, snow, evaporation, etc. Into another form and place and world. Four, it's never too late. Five, if you truly see and love yourself. You can never hurt another. Have a nice and meaningful day or night, everybody. Make it one. Buddha Namo Bodeya. And now we will continue with more. And this is um, Metta Cultivation and Meditation and Thoughts. <clears throat> May all creatures, all breathing things, all beings, one and all, without exception, experience good fortune only. May they not fall into any harm. That's the Anagotara Nikaya. 72. Train yourself in doing good that lasts and bring happiness. Cultivate generosity, a life of peace, and a mind of infinite universal love. Itavutaka 22. With good will for the entire cosmos, cultivate a limitless heart and mind, beaming above, below, and all around, unobstructive, without trace of hostility. Sutta Nipata 1 verse 8. Having killed anger, you sleep in ease. Having killed anger, you do not grieve. The noble ones praise the slaying of anger. With its honed eyed crest and poison root, for having killed it, you do not grieve. Samyutta Nikaya, verse 70. If you keep unbroken awareness on every in breath and every out breath, the knots of karma will be sundered, leading to the highest welfare. SN Kodika. And I just got done uh, feeling blissful and meditating, chakra meditation as well. If it isn't good, let it die. If it doesn't die, make it good.
pieces within oneself to be found in the same place as agitation and suffering. It is not found in a forest or on a hilltop, nor is it given by a teacher. Where you experience suffering, you can also find freedom from suffering. Try to run away. Trying to run away from suffering is actually to run towards it. Do everything with a mind that lets go. Do not accept praise or gain or anything else. If you let go a little, you will have a little peace. If you let go a lot, you will have a lot of peace. If you let go completely, you will have complete peace. The Buddha once saw a jackal, a wild hog, run out of the forest where he was staying. It stood still for a while, then it ran into the underbush, and then out again. Then it ran into a tree hollow, then out again. Then it ran... Uh, then it went into a cave, only to run out again. One minute it stood, the next it ran. Then it lay down, then it jumped up. The jackal had the, the mange. When it stood, the mange would eat into its skin, so it would run. Running, it was still uncomfortable, so it would stop standing. Standing, it was still uncomfortable, so it would lie down. Then it would jump up again, running to the underbush, the tree hollow, never staying still. The Buddha said, Monks, did you see that jackal this afternoon? Standing, it suffered. Running, it suffered. Sitting, it suffered. Lying down, it suffered. It blamed standing for its discomfort. It, it blamed sitting and running and lying down for its discomfort. It blamed the tree, the underbush, and the cave. In fact, the problem was with none of those things. The problem was with his mange. We are just the same as the jackal. Our discontent is due to wrong view because we don't exercise sense and restraint. We blame our suffering on externals. Whether we live in Thailand, America, etc., we aren't satisfied. Why not? Because we still have wrong view. Just that. So wherever we go, we aren't content. But just as the jackal would be content uh, wherever it went as soon as it is mange was cured, so would we be content wherever we once... Uh, we went once we rid ourselves of wrong view. The secret of life is everything is out of control. Uh, we have to walk in a way that we only pr uh, print peace and serenity on the earth. Walk as if you are kissing the earth with your feet. There is no way to happiness. Happiness is the way. Sometimes your joy is the source of your smile, but sometimes your smile can be the source of your joy. People have a hard time letting go of the suffering. Out of a fear of the unknown, they prefer suffering that is familiar. The most precious gift we can offer others is our presence. When mindfulness embraces those we love, they will bloom like flowers. Hope is important because it can make the present moment less difficult to bear. If we believe that tomorrow will be better, we can bear a hardship today. My actions are my only true belongings. I cannot escape the consequences of my actions. My actions are the ground upon which I stand. Keeping your body healthy is an expression of gratitude to the whole cosmos, the trees, clouds, and everything. We have more possibilities available in each moment than we realize. People deal too much with the negative and with what is wrong. Why not try and see the positive things to just touch those things and make them bloom? The Buddha described how one's lives as a monastic, DN242. Having gone forth from the householder life into the homeless life of a monastic, he or she dwells, restrained by the restraint of the precepts, persisting in right behavior, seeing danger in the slightest faults, observing the commitments he has taken regarding body, deed, and word, devoted to the skilled and purified life, Perfected in ethical conduct, with the sense doors guarded, skilled in mindful awareness and content. Be free from sam samsara and attain liberation, practice and cultivate. And now I will, that's the end of the Dharma talk. And uh, for those interested in the actual projection aspect, here will be a technique that you can Google and the preparation walkthrough and stuff like that. So total 75 minutes and boom, you're in the astral astral world. So, in the morning, write down keywords, notebooks, morning affirmations, and night ones. Then you can do the OBE walkthrough, uh, optional week 13 brainwave generator, uh, relax the whole body, five minutes, um, keep a steady pace of breath, OBE breath technique for five minutes, then energy body pre-stimulation with different visualizations, and then energy raising, five minutes as well. And then primarily, 
primary center stimulation for the chakras and inhaling and exhaling energy stimulating those centers for 15 minutes. And then with uh, third eye trigger practice and get into a trance uh, like an elevator relaxing deeper, 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 the further you go, feel it. And then after that 15 minutes, uh, body loosening, feel it, uh, intention it, let it happen. Body loosening exercises or technique. And then you can do the uh, OBE exit technique of corner fingering or the rope technique or the roll out technique, stuff like that, levitation technique for 20 minutes or so. And then, yeah, and then you, and then after you can write down your notes, observations of the experience in return. So yeah, and then you can also also do the full body circuit uh, uh, for 10 minutes. And a good uh, astral body stimulation technique is to visualize and feel like your body's a pipe, different areas, right? Just a pipe. And uh, there's a sponge with water, and it goes out one end throughout the other. And then there's also that one, recreating that tingling sensation. And then a brush, visualize the brush. Right, your whole body too. And then you can also do Tai Chi, chakra meditation, etc. So yeah, you guys have a nice, noble, and meaningful day.